I am Stacy A. Cross, and there is no E in my, my name. name. question but really we're gonna look away don't get offended okay don't get offended <laughs> but we're still gonna do it when you're ready I'm ready Billy's ready. oh we're rolling guys all right I am Stacey A Cross and there is no E in my name the comfort killers were here with the OG comfort killer man out in the West Coast Woo! the extension <laughs> I'm here with Billy Jean it's all about marketing Billy thank What's you up? so much for Having us, the Comfort Killers, hey. and Thelonious C. Jones hey. here. Thank you guys for thank you, thank you for thank you for making me a part of this today. Oh, so man. the one thing I love about you guys is number one the energy. You immediately can meet somebody. You can tell if you're gonna vibe, mm. like if it's if it's gonna be fire. So yes. I feel like some fire is about to happen. Something's gonna no. happen. No. And I know I can keep it real and I can keep it honest and I can tell them I can tell it to them straight. But so that makes what? me happy. That's uh, one of the things when I came here. I said, you know, we only mess with the real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we have the real information, people get real results. So we're not in it for the fluff, and that's why we came for you. Absolutely. All right. So how can I start? Hey. Today? All right. Let's start it. You know, I like re reverse engineering. A lot of people say, you know, you got to reverse engineer success. Yeah. And then you could pick a part where you need to be. Okay. So let's talk about your favorite book, turned into my favorite book, Scaling Up. It's a great oh, book, isn't hey, it? Listen, it's the, it's it's the Bible great, now. It's, it, it really is. <laughs> it's the Bible now. Scaling Up. I like up. how you went there. And, okay, so I'll, I'll tell you this about Scaling Up. If you guys haven't read it, the biggest takeaway and wake-up moment for me with this book called Scaling Up by Vernon Harnish is this. Your business is not unique. Mm. This is not unique. This is not unique. Mm. My business is not unique. Mm. Business is business is business. And as reading through this book, it's a slice of humble pie to all the challenges that you think you're facing alone, you're not. Mm. People have been there before, and guess what? They have the answers. All the shit that's in your way right now, they're solutions. But you keep trying to figure it out by your fucking self, mm. which is the number one mistake that I see entrepreneurs between zero to one million dollars make. This idea of I'm going to figure it out myself. Yeah. That's how you waste time. Mm. That's how you waste money. And I, I cannot stress enough, don't do it. Like it will fuck your whole life up. Like I say that like with like 100% me being genuine, it will ruin your whole life, like mm. straight up. Trying to be the solopreneur forever. Forever, exactly. There's a time for it. Like yeah. don't get it twisted. Yeah. There's definitely a time for it where your resources are strapped and you gotta get creative, yeah. right? There's never like a resources right. for lack of creativity. Mm. So like there, there is a time for that, but don't get it twisted. If you have the opportunity to learn from someone else's mistakes yeah. as opposed to your own, you should do that every single time. Yeah, so where were you at the point when you were reading this? Were you the solopreneur type? Did you have a smaller space? What, what? So like, it, when, I'm, when I'm coming off with this energy, I'm mostly yelling at a former version of myself. Mm. Meaning, when I first started doing this digital advertising stuff, I was just locked in a room at my mom's house researching random shit online, yep. buying like a course, I wouldn't actually I'd take that back, I wasn't buying any course, but I was going on every free webinar that I could, yeah. take advantage of possible, yeah. and then just inch by inch like going at it. But let me give you guys the, like a very tangible example of expert advice versus figuring it out by yourself. Okay. So when I first got into, this is long story short, five years ago I was trying to get an online education platform where I could actually host courses okay. but not like anything that had to do with education it was more like for like cooking and I wanted to license them and be like this model of courses the platform that I used ended up costing me twenty seven thousand dollars twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars okay I didn't have that money my buddy got an inheritance from his mom he bet on me because he knew I had the entrepreneur spirit so I was like bro we gotta go all in on this online education stuff it's gonna change the world so he listened to me. We used every single dollar that he got on that platform. One year later, I ended up finding out that that same platform, we could have had installed for $600. Damn. Damn. That means we overpaid for something based off of ignorance by 27,000 bucks. We used every fucking dollar we had in funding because I was a superstar. I could figure it out by myself. Mm. Mm. That's, no, that's I mean, real money no, that was made yeah. a mistake for me. And we do that all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually, you know, we're going over your work and, and you leave a lot of content behind where someone could learn for free, okay? Mm -hmm. You leave a, bu a, a buffet of goodness, yeah. right? 
And I'm like, damn, I mean, we might be doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, we might be doing it wrong. So you're right about that. Find someone that already made the mistakes. And Man. It's save it's you easy. money. But think about energy. it. If I, if I just took the time to even like, I probably could have got the information for free still. Right. But if I reached out to somebody who had an online class, Absolutely. as opposed to like, That's oh, true. someone got to steal my idea and all this other That's shit. True. If I just reached out and said, hey, I'm looking for a platform to use, they probably would have emailed back or maybe their assistant would have yeah. and said, just use this. Right. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, and it was, that, it was simple. Mm. Simple. But that, that was one mistake that I'm giving you guys, but I'm telling you, I've made a countless number of those. Okay. And it's only in hindsight today I can sit here in this office and say, man, oh man, like how much fucking time do yeah. I waste? Right, but your creativity is not wasteful, man. You, I, I don't know what's going I like, on. <laughs> I like to Right here, yeah, like this thing right here. I mean, I watch, I watch your videos and um, Parshaw, I think you know Parshaw. She's always, yeah. yeah, Parshaw is awesome. Hey, shout Parshall. out Parshaw. Parshaw. Um, she actually shot that, that photo right there back. So she, oh, did she? Yeah, she's awesome. Okay. So, um, How do you guys know each other? She did some work with the Comfort Killers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Small world. Small yeah, world, yeah. baby. That's it. That's uh, it. She actually told me about you. So I was looking okay. I was looking at some different uh, things that you were putting out. And your videos, even the, the, the marketing videos that you mm -hmm. put out, yeah. they're different. It's, it's not just, hey, click the ad, click below. Yeah. There's this whole story, this whole uniqueness. Yeah. Like you guys really get dressed up. I saw the pirate one, mm -hmm. of course the Wolf of Wall Street. One point, what? Where you we, just did, we just did a James Bond one. Oh, see, yeah, I see that. Do you think that creativity is needed now in this digital space? This is. Actually, I'm glad you asked that question. So, number one, when people go on Facebook, Instagram, yep. YouTube, even us, even though we're entrepreneurs and we're still in that mindset, when you go there, you pull it up to be entertained. You're at the doctor's office, you're in the waiting room, you pull out your phone because you want to be entertained. You can't fall asleep at night, you take out your phone, you want to be entertained. You're at a boring dinner with a bunch of people, you're, gonna be, you're in the movie theater, the movie got slow, you want to be entertained. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if someone comes to a platform to be entertained, and then the first thing they see is something trying to be sold, <laughs> What are your chances of grabbing that person's attention? That it's incongruent. It's not what they're looking That's for. True. So for me, my first step, and you can see it's, it's tagged downstairs, is entertain, educate, execute. Mm. In other words, we gotta entertain you first. And then once I catch your attention a little bit, let me teach you a little something, right. something. And then let me give you a tactical action plan to go fucking get something done. Mm. That's when you get the biggest fans, where somebody's having a problem, you give them a solution, and then they actually implement it, and they go, oh my God, it worked. Yeah. I need it to happen again. Um, and that's like our best customers usually they go through that process of the entertaining thing because it's just simply required. And it, um, you could do that in every, you think, every industry? Every single industry, but it's funny because so many people act like you can't. Mm. Yeah. So, you, you know, you take like, even take boring industry like fucking insurance. Yeah, yeah. Insurance, boring. Insurance, watch this up. Insurance agents will say, well, what am I supposed to do, Bill? I, I, I can't make insurance fun. Okay, Aflac. True. True. <laughs> Fucking flow from progressive. Right. Guy Cole. The guy from State Farm. Jake from Step yeah, Farm. Yeah. The, the, the danger guy. Yeah. Mayhem. Mr. Mayhem. Like, guys, they're doing it. Fucking Budweiser, the frogs, even though that's alcohol and silly, like, you can put whatever language that's that you true. want to. That's, that's a limiting belief you have in your head. As a matter of fact, that limiting belief will be shattered because the only people that are going to win over the next five to ten years are the people who entertain. Mm. I can't stress it enough. Entertaining your audience is not, is not, is not optional. It's a requirement to succeed in 17. Like, it, I will not be surprised if it's normal when people enroll into traditional schools and one of the required classes they have to take is comedy. Damn. I wouldn't be in either. Like, think so, about it. So Every we, form of medium that, that does well, and any commercial you see, a super, when you watch super commercial, what's the number one form of advertising you see? Comedian. Yeah, that is that's true. The, that's the number one tone that you see every single time. So if it's being infused, like if you think about the people with the followings today on Instagram and Vine yeah. and all the kids that are blowing up, yeah. it's funny. It's entertaining, it's funny. It's funny, or music. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. And so yeah. that's one thing that I'm most passionate about right now is I see the radical shift that's coming with education, um, that being one of them, and no one's doing anything about it. Yeah. No one's talking anything about it. People are still borrowing money to pay a whole bunch of interest for 30 years to come out with skills that you can't actually utilize in the real world today. Well, let's talk on that because you're a big advocate for changing the entire yeah. education system. Yeah. Where did this come about? Like, where where did that you know passion come? All right. Can I? I'll, I'll hit you guys with something. I don't want to go too deep into it, yeah. but I'll, I'll hit you hit, the hit, audience with something. Okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm school y'all a little bit. Take some there, notes, okay? webinar. So check it out. The challenges right now. I used to work a job at a call center, and it was a call center called Ashford University. My job at this university was literally to call people up and see if they wanted to go back to school. 
Now, in principle, it sounds like that's fucking fantastic. Yeah. You're changing lives. You're getting people who aren't doing their thing. Da da da. So listen to the spin and to the catch, okay? The benefit was you didn't have to have uh, a high school diploma. As long as you had your GED, you were good to go. So their positioning was, look, we, room, we remove the barriers so we make education possible for anyone. Okay, fine. The next thing is, well, nobody's got money for college, so what do they do? So they move their prices to be just the exact price where nobody has to pay anything out of the pocket and the government will pay for it all. Mm -hmm. So that's your FAFSA. They think they give you up to 9,500 bucks yep. a year and then they give you $5,500 in what's called grants. Yep. Grants are cool because you don't have to pay that money back. Pell you grant. can Pell Grant, yeah. exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. Pell Grant, you use it. So ideally, it's fantastic, but you have to look at what you're getting in exchange. So we call people and unfortunately, a lot of them were very poor, very uneducated, not with guidance, a lot of minorities too, I fucking hate to say that, mm -hmm. but you call and say, hey, guess what, I have an opportunity for you, you can go back to school, da 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 you can get your degree, all this other shit. So the person gets excited, yeah. they say, okay, what do I have to do? They say, you don't have to do anything, you just have to fill out this paperwork, mm -hmm. and then you have to go on the FAFSA website, and then you have to get granted the money, and then boom, you're good to go. And they go, what, this is crazy, I'm fucking in school, yeah. hell yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they haven't been in school in five years. They're not conditioned to do this. So they're thinking it's going to be a breeze because the salesman, the enrollment advisor, says you can do this. Mm. But first of all, anybody been to college, this shit is not easy. Nah. It's not easy. Let's so what happens is people come in and the first two classes that are required are basically dummy down classes that make the transition easier. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. However, you're still paying money for those classes. And so by the time they get to the third class, and now it's the actual real shit, most people start dropping out from the third to the sixth class. But you still have to pay for every single one of those. So now people, because there was like $1,000 a year, or whatever the, it ends up being, they end up being $10,000 in debt, majority never fucking finished at all. The school doesn't care because they still got paid. And it, it's almost like this thing that happens where you don't even realize it's happening because there was no money exchange. Yeah. You just signed a piece of paper, you didn't really realize what you're doing, you're following a dream and the momentum of like, yeah, I wanna go back to school, but most people are just leaving with debt with zero degree. And then the few percentage of people that do get their actual degree, they're coming out with a degree with zero skills. Mm. Right. Boom. Hey. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, literally, here's what, the, here's what the business model really is. Call strangers, get them to take out loans. Have them give those loans to us, that money. They can worry about paying off the debt later. Hmm. And a whole bunch of interest With on. no skills. With no skills. Yep. With no skills yep. to actually pay back. And I That's say, what they're doing. And I can say you didn't include the time investment, too. Oh, no. We, yeah, don't, we, exactly. didn't, we didn't even go down that road. That's the biggest asset, right? Yeah, now. that was the biggest asset. I'm yeah. one of the statistics. I'm sorry to say, I'm a statistic. Yeah. Same, I mean, I'm I'm sure. I'm a, I, but here's the thing I took out a private loan, paid cash to the, to the billing, you know, the registrar lady, right? Yeah. She was, her eyes were like, oh my God, and I'm pointing like this, $6,000, one class, $6,000. Yeah. And I'm like, what if I had turned that? I always said that to myself, what if I had turned that, just poured it something, mm -hmm. poured it an investment. You know, so I mean, we all go through it, but I'm happy that you're so passionate because I think people need to hear that other side 100%. of it. Because you know what? Your parents are saying go, and I understand it, you know, a surgeon, hey, watch a this. surgeon needs to go. Exactly. There are situations, so you take my mother, who was a probation officer for 30 years. She uh -huh. worked for the city. Yep. She was not able to get promoted because she didn't have a degree. And then she had my sister and me, and she's taking care of us. Yep. So she needed a flexible online university that she can go to. Good, Ma, you need to go to this. This yep. is for you. Yep. That's not what was happening. Right? They were really just taking advantage of people, yeah. which is why they're always in lawsuits and litigation and yeah. everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's my original passion. So I got the privilege with my parents to go to the University of San Diego. Okay. Mm -hmm whole different vibe like you go to college there and it's, it was forty thousand dollars a semester uh some of my friends are some of the richest kids in the world yep. literally right and your whole perception i got perspective tattooed on my wrist changes here's some people that are just being taken advantage of and these other people are just doing college because it's just a fucking party with the yeah, friends yeah okay. and they're just all meeting each other and rubbing elbows and da 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 meanwhile the majority of everybody is not getting educated mm -hmm. they're not getting help they're being completely misinformed they're being completely taken advantage of yeah. 
And then what? Nobody gives a fuck. Damn, then you turn into a comfort killer and go rip the whole damn thing to shreds. Okay? <laughs> then you gotta power up. So let's 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 get into the big deal. I mean, I want people to be specific. That's why we, we started this webinar sure. so people could ask questions. I'm gonna take one now. Okay. And then we're gonna get into it. Theo is gonna Theo, we got some questions for you. Cause right. we need there, there's some things, there's some points here, cost per lead, yeah, cost per customer. So yeah. a lot of people don't know that the, the ROI, and mm. we're gonna get into that. But I'm gonna take a question so you guys know I'm not ignoring. Okay, I'm Leon from Houston, and I help people sell digital products. Currently, I've been having problems with the tar with uh, the targeting authors that want to use pre-made fiction plots. I've tried to target using Facebook, and people following prominent authors conversion rate was one percent. Okay. We also have follow-up email sequences. What can we do in targeting that gives us a better conversion? Okay, so let's let's start off by unpacking that. That's unpacking. So you're saying. They're running advertisements, and it sounds like what you sell. He says, "I help people. I help people sell digital products." Currently, I've been having problems with the targeting authors that want to use pre-made fiction plots. So, is the digital products that you sell is, is it pre-made fiction plots? Mm. Help me understand that. I, I need to understand your Unpack product. it more, Leo. Yeah, help me understand your product. It sounds like basically if I'm an author and I want to write something, you basically give me a jump start by giving me a bunch of templates of like, well, here's some subjects you can write about. Is that what I'm hearing? I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm an author. Leon, Leon, you got to get more specific. Get more specific. Yeah, help, help me out so I can help you out. But then on the back side of that, you're basically saying whatever ad you're running, it's getting a 1% conversion rate. Right? This is for everybody regardless of the industry, Leon. If you're getting a 1% conversion rate, meaning 1% of the people that click your ad are actually giving you their name, email, phone number, buying, whatever it is, there's one thing beyond everything that it usually almost is. It's your offer. What's happening is people are coming to the page and whatever you're offering, they're saying, ah, I don't really want it. So a lot of times people in online marketing, they spend so much time and they say, well, maybe it's the color of my image. Right. Maybe it's the way that I said this. 99% of the time, it's just what the fuck you're offering. So like, let's say you're doing advertisements for like something like a gym or something. Instead of a one day pass, offer a two week pass. See if the response rate jumps. Mm -hmm. So right now you're offering like pre-made templates for fiction authors, offer them something else. So for example, you want to go to the number one thing that an author really wants, and typically that's to sell more books. Right. Mm -hmm. So show them a fucking quick PDF of the top 10 ways to increase sales on their book. Oh, and I bet you that 1% goes to 10, 20, maybe 30%. Makes sense. You see what I'm saying? Like even without knowing completely what you're talking about, but just making that pivot. Whatever's happened so far is the market has told you flat out, they don't care. Don't take it offensively, say, cool, I'm glad I was able to learn that in such a quick way and so affordably, now let me pivot. Yeah. Sure. So, you know, thank you. And uh, Leon said yes, you unpacked it right. Yeah. Uh, cool, very good. Yeah. So, I hope that helped you. Keep asking your questions, make it specific, because that's why we're here, that's yeah. the value that we're bringing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Facebook, Google, Instagram, Twitter, we got a poll the going tools. up. The tools, the channels, the platforms. Yeah. I mean, you're a Facebook guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, which, so all of them, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, the three that we mainly play on right now with our clients and ourselves, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. The reason why we're there is because most of the time for any business, if you're trying to find your customers, between one of those three platforms, you will find them. Mm. But bigger than that, I want you guys to understand something about quote unquote social media. It's really just where people are hanging out right now. If you want to get a hold of A, B, or C, on any given day, you can find us on our fucking cell phones browsing through one of those sites. Yep. So I always tell people, like especially like Facebook, stop thinking of it as this complicated beast of social media and think of it as a giant billboard. And on this billboard, you can send a message to anybody in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, two billion people in the world out of the seven. That's it. Once you understand it's nothing more than a way to get your message out to someone mm -hmm. and all the rest is on you, that's when you start winning. Facebook style is not to fucking make you sell. Instagram style is not to make you sell. YouTube style is not. It's just to put your message in front of the person and then it's up to you to do so. That's why people are losing right now because your message sucks. Wow. They don't care about your message. You're missing or you're sending the wrong message to the wrong person. For example, I play NBA 2K17 religiously. I see it. It's, just, that, it's that, right there. It's, it's right the there. Xbox is right <laughs> there. The Xbox is there. Yeah. We have a couple of them in the office. I play all the time. If you show me an advertisement about Xbox and video games, I'm going to click it probably like half the time, yeah. depending on what I'm doing and the timing when you're hitting me. But if you show that exact ad to my girlfriend, 
she will probably report it and spam it, you know, put something negative, like get this shit away from my man, like you're ruining our family, something along those lines. Because that message isn't relevant to her. Right. Simple game, right? Just get the right message to the right person. That's it. But it's awesome when you, you framed it. Change the mindset about the platform first, yes. and then use it as the tool that it is. Instead of being, you, we're, we're Facebooking wrong, is what you're saying. Exactly. We're using it to socialize. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not using it as a tool to bring awareness to our brand, and, and the message is important. But you help by adding entertainment value. Yeah. Your, there's strategy behind it. Let's talk about strategy. Sure. Even here's the best way to sell anything online, period. And I'll break it down in a simplified way so everybody can use this it. This is too real. Very simple. This is too real. Address the audience of who you want to advertise to. Find out what their number one problem is that they're facing. Kind of like we just did with the authors. Offer to solve that problem for free. That formula, you give me an industry, you guys can yell it out. That formula will work every single time. So how I've grown my brand is this. I say, hey, business owners, I know you guys need more customers. Here's a free training of how to use Facebook to get more customers. Mm -hmm. At the end of the training, I say, if you found that helpful, then you also may find this helpful, but this one costs money. Would you like to buy it? Mm -hmm. And we repeat the same thing every single time. Oh, I saw you were trying to use Instagram to get more customers. Well, here's a free training to get more customers on Instagram. If you find this helpful, would you like to buy some more? Mm. If the process doesn't change. You know who else does it really fucking good? If we go to a mall right now, there's going to be somebody with some orange chicken on a toothpick. And we're going to walk around, we're going to be starving and say, hey, if you want to try this orange chicken, it's really good. Like, nah, nah, we're not hungry, man. Get away, bro. Like, just try it. And then we take a bite and go, fuck, this is pretty good. You want to eat lunch here? Yeah, yeah. They gave us a sample. They gave us a sample. Yeah. And watch this. Some people will take the sample and run. Some people will actually buy. Some people will buy and come back and bring their friends. That's all businesses. It's the same fucking thing online. We just try and complicate and put all this other shit on it. It's not. It's all the problem for something. Very simple. Very yeah. simple. And it's very real here. Hey, you got a billboard. I mean, I mean, that's so unorthodox speaking <laughs> in this, this digital space. Yeah. Why billboards? Why, you know, there's a lot of sure. leads, a lot of, lot of sources. Newspaper ads. So why, why, did I, why did I spend $36,000 $36, for three weeks for four billboards? Is that the best visibility in San Diego? But nonetheless, it's fucking thirty-six grand for four billboards, which is a picture. There's not, nothing crazy. Who the fuck would do that, right? So I'll, I'll tell you why. Number one, the billboards that we purchased. Well, let me ask you guys a question first. I'll ask y'all. Yeah. When you think of billboards, what are the companies that you typically see on billboards? Man, guess what? You got in a car accident because I'm a lawyer. That's it. And they put that in some criminal <laughs> shit. You got in an accident? No, not yet. But I'm going to. So you see lawyers yep, through lawyers. there. Yep. You see brands like Coca-Cola yep. up yep. there, yep. Pepsi, Mountain Dew. Big boys. All of these Fortune 100 yep. companies. Big boys. So you see like Coke. Pepsi, Ford, Chevy, Billy is marketing, da 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 <laughs> We sound ourselves right in there. But here's the thing, either even with that positioning, it still doesn't justify how much it costs versus the time that it's up there. Mm -hmm. So what did we do? We decided to make several advertisements mm -hmm. featuring our billboards. So we would make video ads for YouTube, for Facebook, for Instagram, but in there we would subtly say, oh yeah, when my billboard was up here, or my billboard's up here. So now we've taken this three week time period and we've eternalized it. Mm -hmm. Those billboards will last fucking forever. So I'm not looking at 36 grand for three weeks, I'm saying 36 grand for having fucking shots that we have all the time, yeah. that we use forever. So now whenever I want to leverage this positioning and I want to be associated with these bigger brands, I can show a quick clip from the billboards. I love it. One time, I right? Love it. So it's just really just playing with the different assets and, and using them in different ways. I love it. Theo, you got something? Because you've been taking notes. I, I mean, I, he's I, in the education I, system I, right now. I, We're I, taking notes. Um, you know, before before that, I want to get into, like, the funnel game has is, is got to be strong, right? Yeah. Okay, you, you got a lead. You're generating leads. They come to this front-end product. It might be a lead magnet. Sure. And then you upsell them, yeah. right? So building a business, what do you think is a good lead magnet? Because I have some here, they're just starting a business. Okay. You know, we're gonna we're gonna answer your question, Jamie. What do you think is a good lead magnet? Let's say a real estate, a real estate program to help people flip homes. Okay. Of um, course. Well, and, and I'm gonna unpack that too, just for, for everyone listening. The lead magnet in the case, the example I just gave you earlier was the orange chicken. Yeah. The orange chicken was the lead magnet. It was like, okay, here's this physical item, you can taste it, you can touch it, you can smell it for free, come on in. 
And then once you come in, now they're like, okay, well, we got fucking a whole entire bowl that you can buy, and there's your core offer. Right. But then behind that, they also say, well, shit, by the way, have you tried this dessert? This fucking dessert is special. You got these fortune cookies, bro? We got you. Right? And they keep selling you again, and then they bring you back in the cycle tomorrow because they know you're going to get hungry again at yeah. dinner, and you keep repeating, right? Okay. So you're really thinking of the lifetime cycle of the customer. So in this particular case where she gave the example of if somebody has a course teaching people how to flip homes, yes. how would you attract somebody there? So the very first thing I like to do is map out problem, solution. The person who is most likely to want to buy a course on how to flip a home, what problems are they facing in their life? And before I even go there, I want to take a step back and the best thing to do to identify who's the most likely to buy is take any company that's been in existence for a little bit of time and say who's been buying from you so I would ask you guys first who's the typical buyer of this online course about flipping homes who is that person um, I don't know Okay. I have courses and they don't sell, so I don't. I have no clue. That's why I'm here. Gotcha. You know I mean? Okay. Well, perfect. And that's fine. So that's what we really have to start to understand is, well, fuck. Who cares? Who actually wants this? And it's usually people looking for a business opportunity, right? This would be a biz op category. Mm -hmm. And so when you're thinking of someone who's looking for a biz opportunity, you probably start off with someone who is in a job that is not permanent because they want the flexibility to do something. I'll give you an example. Sure. Uber drivers. The reason why someone's doing Uber, a lot of time, you guys have had a conversation with your Uber or Lyft driver or whatever, usually, yep. almost 90% of the time, they're like, well, actually, I have a fucking whole other company and I'm doing something else completely. Yeah. Yeah. They got cards in there. They got, 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 they and I'd love for you to come and I'm going to show you how you can flip houses with no money down, right, without needing like the perfect credit score, any of this other fucking hype that you see on TV. If you'd like to come, click here to register. Yeah, I love I like that. that. I like that. I you know that. what I mean? I like so like, you just get, you got to identify the person who's going yeah. to do it. Yeah. The who is everything. The who and then is the problem. Hit, because watch this. All of a sudden when we had Uber driver in our mind, it was easy to come up with a message. That's true. It was easy to get them in that's because now you knew right. where they were, what they were thinking, right. how to relate to them, and that's the thing. That's it. So, Hey, Comfort Cutter, this is real information. I'm sitting here Without alongside yeah. Billy Jean is marketing ink face everywhere. I drove past. <laughs> I, I saw, uh, there's his face. The Uber said, where are you going? There's his face. <laughs> this is where we're going. Um, here's a question from Jamie. Uh, when you were starting a new business, how much money would you allot, allot for marketing? Man, Great question, I, actually, Jamie. I, I love this question because 99% of business owners, a lot zero. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's the last thing people, that's why college fucking, going back, I hate to go back to it, that's why it pisses me off, is because there's so much focus on the infrastructure and like employees and like lawyers. Guys, the first zero, especially to $100,000, you're not doing none of that shit. You know, that fucking employees and payroll, and all this, the structure and all this shit, HR, and all this stuff, you, you got one thing to do, sell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so all the time you're in college, you should be taking fucking sales courses and marketing courses to create those opportunities. So how much money would I allot for is the same amount you're going to allot for investing into whatever you're doing. Mm. That's how much. Guys, marketing is the everything. You guys ever seen a shitty product that still crushes it? Every time you see that product, you get fucking mad. Like, oh my God, I can't believe they're killing it. Da, da, da. Well, guess what? They're better fucking marketers. Yeah. They, they were you guys know the Snuggie? Yeah. Everybody knows the Snuggie? Well, I was just thinking about the that. The Snuggie was, was like the fourth version, yep. you know? The Snuggie was the fourth version. There was like four other companies that came and came up with the Snuggie. They didn't make that shit up. They just had a better infomercial. Yeah, marketing. that's true. And then they had budget to put behind it to keep going out. Advertising is everything. It's, it's the whole game, period. Well, we're going to talk about that. I know a lot of you guys are on Facebook. And um, for those seeing this on the vlog, we're going to answer this question and we're going to have a PDF for you. Yeah. Um, we're, we're talking about Facebook marketing here. Yeah. I mean, it's Facebook, very, Instagram, YouTube. Listen, YouTube's my favorite. YouTube's your favorite. I see. YouTube. Check it out. So we've done a lot of spending on Facebook over here. We spent millions of dollars, blah, blah, blah. Over this last year, I want to say 70% of our budget as a company has been primarily YouTube. Yeah. Mm. 
And we have seen more shifts with YouTube, um, more opportunities created, more sales being made from YouTube than anything at the most affordable rate. Here's why. Right now, finally, everyone's been getting on board that Facebook ads works, right? Mm -hmm. Guys, when I started like Facebook ads like five, six years ago, everyone was like, that social shit doesn't work. What is that? <laughs> you couldn't even advertise in the newsfeed. It was only the right column. Mm -hmm. And so people were like, I didn't even know those existed. And now I'm seeing this consciousness of everyone's like, well, I can do Facebook. And I'm seeing there's other, you know, uh, this whole career opportunity of being a Facebook marketer. So whenever the market zigs, I always look for the zag. Okay. Mm. So the attention is all on Facebook. So where's the Zach? Is that is that YouTube? I love that. That's Zach is, is YouTube. <laughs> you know, and, and here's the cool thing with YouTube is it's not, like Facebook and YouTube both work on a bidding system. Meaning the more advertisers there are, the more you pay. Which is why in quarter four, your prices will typically go up on your ads because it's more competitive because of holidays. Yeah. yeah. So on YouTube, where you're forced to do a video to advertise, you already block out ninety percent of the people because most people are afraid of video. They're mm -hmm. uncomfortable with video. And guess what? I'm talking to you. You're mm -hmm. afraid of video. You're afraid to take out Tell people the on the webinar yeah. too because they don't want to show their yeah. face. You're afraid of video. <laughs> You're afraid of video will cost you your entire business. Thank, every single oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But it's, it's true. Real it's information. Real. It's real. It's real. It's real. You, don't, you don't have to fucking be, love the way you look and all that other shit, the way you sound on it. Nobody gives a fuck. We're in 2017. If you can genuinely help people, I promise you, they let they, you, you might as, they might as well be blind. Mm. Okay. What I'm telling you guys, if you don't get a grip on the video and own it right now, you will drown. Let me explain to you. Let's take two businesses. Something as simple as a dental office. Okay. okay. And you're looking up where to go. You're on search. You go to Google. You see two companies. One has a couple pictures. One has a video showing you the staff. They give you a tour of the place. They show you how the kids in the back afterwards are done. They play Xbox. They show you who's there. Who's going to win that fucking battle every single time? Mm. The video will. Think about it. Guys, we don't even want to go to the club without knowing who's there. It's true. Like if, you, if we said, hey, let's all meet here at 10 o'clock. First question we have, who's going? Yeah. Who's going? That's for Same thing. When you go to your environment, you want to know who's going to be like, which dentist is going to be there? Who's the staff? Like, who's going to see me? Is it crowded? Do I got to wear a Like, people wonder these things. And so the more they have to wonder, because you won't demonstrate it on video, the more likely you are to lose that sale. Guys, get, do a fucking video. Yeah. And it's affordable. Yeah. Check this out. On YouTube, most people don't realize those ads that show up on your computer, fuck, dude, they don't charge you until 30 seconds yeah. in. Most people don't realize that. 30 seconds in. 30 seconds in. You're already getting hurt. You're they already, already seeing your, see your face. And then also, too, when people see you, that's where the brand recognition comes. I love it. Like, we've spent between 100 to 200 grand religiously on YouTube this year for about a year. And I'm telling you guys, I can't go anywhere without people being like, oh, you're that Billie Jean guy. Yeah. I've seen YouTube guy. Da da da. Billy. Like, it's crazy. We were spending more on Facebook the last couple of years and never got the type of recognition like YouTube. Mm. Attention. It's just, the attention is now, it's weird. It's like weird. Like, how, how is that for you, though, Billy? How, how are you coping with that? Yeah, man, that's a good question. No, that's, 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 Especially that's, after the belly after the belly. Because I'm, I'm not a very flashy person. I tell Stacey yeah. that. And the way you did that, it was so like, it was flashy, but not flashy. I'm like, dude, this is like finesse. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. 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 you know, I'm instantly, ah, fuck this. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm like, oh, this shit's a different <laughs> shit. So I just, I just yeah. want to know, like, how are you dealing with all of that? Yeah. Um, Dude, it's weird. Um, it, it's it's weird and it's weird, right? So it's like I would call it like almost like a micro celebrity, right? If you if you put me at a business conference or a, especially a marketing conference or anything, and I go, I'm, I'm talking. I watched a video of you on YouTube, and you were asking Gary Vee a question. And you're like way off in the back, and yeah. I'm like, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you, but you know, two three years ago, probably people don't right, know. Exactly. I'm sorry, I didn't exactly. but I, I, I'm watching you, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, man. So <laughs> it, it's it's like in that niche, like. It's really well known, but then if I'm outside of that, it's like, who the fuck are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I still get a like break. Like it's not like, yeah. you know, I'm there's not fucking LeBron where it's like yeah, no matter where you go, yeah, you're yeah, LeBron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, um, it's it's pretty crazy, man. Like almost every single time I'm in an Uber or Lyft, it's always like and that's why I probably thought of that idea. I know you Postmates. Mm -hmm. Like the last three Postmates is the food delivery place I bring to your house. The people will be like, oh shit, the Jean. And it's first it was exciting. Then I was like, oh shit, you're in my house. Fuck. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah, wait, yeah. wait a second, yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was much. Yeah. And then like, even I spoke at Thrive recently in Vegas, and um, it was, and I was with my girl, and it was literally like, every second, like picture, picture. And I'm very like, I like to be by myself. Mm -hmm. Like my boys will tell you have been around forever. I like to fucking, Luna, like me, I'm a, dude, I really am. I like to play Xbox, like, like right now I'm super social, like we're vibing and yeah, shit, yeah. but like, I'm really just like, 
I like to chill. Yeah. So for me, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So like we had a big point in 2018. So let's attack like every stage and let's yeah. get there. And now I'm honestly having like reservations with like. I don't know if like I get uncomfortable, you know. So like Ooh. I'm not, I'm not. It's yeah, I'm Ooh. comfortable. I get uh -oh. uncomfortable. Uh -oh. I do. Uh -oh. I do. You gotta stay right there. Yeah. <laughs> Talking my language. So let's talk about that okay. comfort killer, because you know stepping off and, and making and making a name for yourself in this space and coming out pretty much. I know you've been doing it for a long time, but you said your goal was 2017 to be out there and every uh, yeah. every level. I'm seeing you everywhere. What are some things that you had to do in personal life as well as business life to say, you know what? I'm changing this whole thing up. I'm going for it. I'm getting uncomfortable. <sighs> Damn. Um, you, you, well, you got to commit. You got to go all in. And so that's why when you ask me, I was kind of like, oh, shit, because you did. I've been so you committed. Did. Uh -huh. But then I'm like now finding myself. But this way, you also don't know if you like something until you do it. You know what I mean? You, you don't know. Like, you can't assume. Like, um, so even now, and it's, it's a double-edged sword. It's very interesting because at the same time, there's nothing I love more than connecting with someone and they yeah. go, bro, I saw this video that I forgot I created. It's like, that changed my life. Yep. There's nothing, there's yeah. nothing that, that fills you up that, that means more than that. But then also, too, at the same time, there it was almost to a point where I found myself almost being desensitized to hearing it. Okay. And I was kind of concerned for myself because yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't want to seem like I don't care. Right. I'm just overwhelmed right now. Right. But then I also remember, like, put it this way, I, we went to the New York Knicks game. This just happened two weeks ago, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Spike Lee's at every fucking mm -hmm. Knicks game. On the floor. So, and we were, we were right there on the floor. Okay. So, I'm seeing Spike Lee. We're sitting right here, and Spike Lee's right here. And I was like, oh shit, I gotta get a pick with Spike. Yeah. Well, I'm at the Knicks game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, it's literally halftime. I didn't know the game or anything. It's halftime, and I'm walking to, like, the little private area, and he's walking back, literally, like, just walking side by side. Yeah. And I go, Spike, man, legend, big fan. You might if I get a picture. There's no one around us. It's like super calm. No, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. Hector's with me. You know what he does? What? I swear I got it. He looks at me and goes like that. Oh, snap. Put up his hand, like lit, like a face of disgust. Peace. Kept oh. walking. To the point where I was like, damn. Like, I, I literally turned around. I was like, yo, can I get a pic? I thought he was joking. Yeah. I was like, can I get a pic? He did it again. Oh, wow. Kept walking. Yeah. And I felt that moment of like, Shit, mother! I was mad at first, yeah. and then I was like, "Okay, he probably gets it all the time." But at the same time, I never want to make anyone feel like yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. I never want to make. He could have said, "Hey, man, honestly, I'm exhausted." Two words. I, Two words. Give me something. No. Complete dick. Spike so when you say that, and then so when then I thought about the two. Like at the, at the last event, I was like, "It's like shit." I'm gonna fucking sit, like even at our event in San Diego at the Hard Rock, I fucking sit there the whole motherfucking time, shook every fucking hand, got to know everyone's story, and just said, fuck it, like, I don't, I don't wanna do this fight, yeah. yeah. To me, like, I was really mad. I was like, shit. Yeah. Not you know, so, and I was a Spike fan, who's not? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was, but at the end of the same time, I was like, okay, I guess I have to get in a little bit, you know? So, you know, it was interesting. No, you I'm are, still learning. I guess no, my answer no, no, is, no. I'm still learning no, and figuring it's it's it out. True, you can get it at every stage. I think yeah. that. You know, I understand where you're coming from, though. I understand where he's coming from. Man, I get it all the right. time. I'm here at this game all the time. My team is losing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, I get, I get it. But the two words, the, the, the acknowledgement, it goes far, man. Goes hey, far. he didn't have time for me, but, you know, he said, you know. Communication. Said that. Communication, communication is key. Mm -hmm. Guys, drop your questions in here. Make them specific. We got about 10 minutes more. We're going to flow. And this is the part where it's going to get real. <laughs> I mean, it's been real before, but this is, this is going to get real because we're going to build a company. And then we're gonna give you the tools that you need, okay? Mm -hmm. And let's let's build the company right now, the thin air. Okay. We're gonna give you the company like concept. That. We're gonna build it out of thin air. I love doing this. Kevin fine. Kevin Harrison like did it too. He was like, I was like entrepreneur and he was like, <laughs> he's still so good at it though. <laughs> let's give him a company. What company do you think we should give him? It's a startup, they're fresh off the oh, meat rack, solopreneur. Yeah. They're coming in here. I mean anything. You let's, know what happened. I mean, I, I know you're ready. This is what That's I what I'm do. trying to. I'm, I'm, trying. The, I'm the best what in the world at this right here. Training for medical receptionist. Well, that has, that's her company, Medical okay. Receptionist Network. Training, writing a book. It's a medical receptionist handbook. Okay. It's finished. It's completed. What's the next step? We want to get to training medical receptionists going into step, that. Step number negative one. Negative zero. Is I really have to have clarity in what it is that she does. Okay. So I'll bring this up, and if any of you guys are like marketers out there, sometimes you may talk with the client, and once people start talking about their expertise or specialty, they start to use acronyms, they start to use big words, and then sometimes you don't ask for clarity because you don't want to sound dumb. Yeah. Biggest mistake you would ever make as a marketer. Happens, I still see that all the time. So right now, the very first thing I'm going to do is that my favorite question I'd love to ask any business owner is this. Explain to me in fifth grade, like I'm in fifth grade, what do you do? Mm, go well, ahead. The, the handbook, first of all, is in very layman's terms. Okay. It talks about quality care, communication, 
how important that role is. So you is created in a healthcare. handbook mm-hmm. to help medical receptionists right. thrive in the work environment. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. So now I got to play. Oh, okay. From so my head to the bottom line. Second thing I wonder in my head, I say, okay, is that the main product is the handbook or is there other products associated with that? There's going to be a training which would be something that you would do yearly and gotcha. for new employees to come in so that they are in that same mindset with the culture of your office and keeping with how they interact with your patients, staff, management. Gotcha. And so there's the book and then you want to do coaching behind it, how to, how to do it. Training and, and certification. E- e-training with e-training the certification, certification. at yep. the end. Got it. And then how long have you been doing it? We're doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, how, how long have you been a medical receptionist? Like the skill here. Oh, for myself, I've yeah. been in healthcare over 15 years now. Okay, over 15 and years of experience. Now. So the reason why I'm asking all these questions is because you got a lot of people out there who want to teach shit that they're not great at. Yeah. And and, then, and I don't want to belittle this. And can I go a little longer than 10 minutes? Can I Please, go? Please go on. Guys, I, I want to tell you something. Number one key thing to making money is being freakishly good at something that most aren't. You can take me, and I'm good at this marketing, business, sell shit. You put me as a medical receptionist, I'm back at square one. I'm, I'm a nothing burger. She's got 15 years experience. She knows things that I can, I can only begin to imagine to kind of know. So first thing is identify an expert. Now some people say, well, Billy, what if I'm not an expert? Well, fucking practice. Mm. Get better first. Let me give you guys perspective because the entrepreneur needs to hear this because unfortunately I, no one's telling you. When you look at a doctor, the reason why a doctor has so much respect, why they can demand X amount of dollars, is because they went to undergrad for four years. After that, they went to med school for another four years, five years. After that, they did a residency. After that, they did an internship. By the time you see them and you're a warm mom vet doctor, they're 13 years in and about $300,000 of debt in the hole. For some reason in business, you think because you watched a fucking YouTube video that you're a fucking expert. Mm-hmm. Mm. You see the difference? You know why LeBron James gets paid LeBron James money? Because there's only one motherfucking LeBron James. Boom. There's no one in the entire world can do it. And guess how he did it? Because all he does is play basketball. Plus he's gifted from God. It's on some other shit, right? Mm-hmm. But all he's done is play basketball every single day. How much practice are you really putting into your craft? So the reason why I'm going on this tangent is because before I go into the education space or what she should do with her courses, et cetera, the first thing that I have to acknowledge is that she's really an expert. She is, because she's been in the game for 15 years doing her damn thing. So now she is qualified to do this. She has earned this right. So even though her course may blow up with this advice, in the next few months she make a ton of money, don't forget about her 15 years in the hole in the trenches doing what she does. Absolutely. Got it? Mm-hmm. So first thing is I have clarity on what she does. Is she helps medical receptionists thrive in the work environment. Now, I want to get clarity on what the end goal looks like. So does thrive mean make more money? Position themselves in a way to get more raises? Does it mean getting along with coworkers? What's that success all of, look like? All of that. Okay. Um, for the most part, it's to have them have place a, a larger value on their position, uh, to know when to step in to look for more money, to know when uh, maybe they should be accepting more training, more, you know, whatever. For myself, you know, I was a receptionist. I had a supervisor help me get to where I was able to get as far as management. Right. You know, take those opportunities and understand, you know, if this is what you want to do forever, then you need to get really good at it. If it's not, then you need to make that decision as well. So I kind of cover everything, mm-hmm. um, but also focus on patient care, communication, um, attitude, attitude so for me, let's being say, professional. Let's say, us, <laughs> yes. let's say all three of us are, are medical receptionists. What's the number one reason why we would probably be motivated to want to reach out to someone like you? Because you are having some communication issues at work. Okay, so that's perfect. So watch this. It comes back to problem solution, as we Mm -hmm. talked about earlier. So what are the three biggest challenges that we're going through as medical receptionists right now? What are the three biggest challenges as a result of going through your coaching training? What is the one going to solve? Or holding a job, holding, keeping a job? Job security. security. That's that's not belittling. That's That's not belittling. That's big. Let's job security. Okay, Mm -hmm. cool. Um, so we can kind of put them in three categories: job security, job advancement, mm-hmm. right? Let's say right. advancement. Yeah. Um, and then what would be the third? Uh, just uh, keeping the positive attitude, keeping the morale yeah. high. Fucking actually yes. enjoying what you do. Right. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. So the reason why I'm asking that is because I'm writing my first Facebook ad. Mm-hmm. I'm writing my advertisement by re- reversing mm-hmm. these three things. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, first thing, Facebook had a targeting tool 
where you can advertise the people based on where they work at. So you can literally type in works at and put in a certain hospital. The reason why I'm bringing it up, not officially, may not happen, but I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure it's gonna happen, they'll be bringing it back. So what you can do is you can advertise the people based on where they work at. So you can choose these hospitals, and now that's your target group. It's literally, say, works at Kaiser, or works whatever the big hospitals yeah, are, whatever, yeah, yeah. around the country. The other thing that's beautiful about what you're doing is it doesn't have to be local. It doesn't have to be local at all. So you get that base. Now I'm going to let the uh, advertisement copy speak to that specific position. And I'm just going to ask questions. Hey, are you a medical receptionist that has trouble sleeping at night because you don't know if you're going to be able to keep your job? Ooh. Or maybe you advertise to people who are uh, married um, or engaged, and so maybe they're about to have children. Say, hey, have you realized that you love your job and you're happy, but with the money that you're earning right now, you don't know if it's sustainable? And you're looking for, how can you keep it, but how can you move up? How can you catch management, management's eye, right? Or have you found yourself in a rut where you used to love it, everything was good, but now you just find yourself unhappy. Mm -hmm. You're having trouble communicating with your peers, blah, 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 blah. Well, my name is Billy Jean, and I've been in your shoes. In fact, I've been in your shoes for 15 years. And what I'd like to do is every Tuesday, I'm hosting a free Facebook Live where I just answer questions for you about how to survive and thrive as a medical receptionist so you can not only just keep your job and know you're good with management, but you can move up to management and you can just overall be fucking happy. It's happening Tuesday at 5 o'clock. If you'd like to come, simply Shoot me a message below, and I'll save you a spot. I'll, I'll shoot you a reminder when I'm about to go live. Do it consistently for a week. For, no, for a week, for a year. Every single Tuesday, you get about, let's, let's say 10, let's say 10 people show up. Let's say 10 people show up. What does it cost you to do a Facebook Live? Uh, zero. Nothing. It's, it's a free shot. Yeah. You put it there. So you spend, what, five to 10 bucks a day actually advertising it. Let's say you get 10 people there, and let's just say out of all those 10 people, one person every week says, you know what? I want you to actually be my mentor. And then that person pays you 500 bucks a month. And then let's just say you get 20 people there next time, and now you get two people to say yes, and then there's 100 people there. Mm -hmm. See? And then it just starts to add up, and you build up this list. And so also to understand this, the book that you've written, you're giving away for free. Unfortunately, we live in a marketplace today where books by default are being devalued. It's like trying to stop um, um, when music was being downloaded, right? Yeah. People say, no, you still gotta buy my season. Yeah, no, no, people are gonna, they're gonna download yeah. this shit. Yeah. So trying to form the business around the book is the wrong strategy. You let that be your brand and be your hook. Let that mm. be your orange chicken. Mm. Your book is your orange chicken. So you can run that same ad instead of going to a Facebook Live, you say, hey, look, I'm gonna mail you my book for free, just place shipping. We do free plus shipping offers all the time. I'm gonna send it to you so that way it's a break even there, but then have a training on the back end. Hey, by the way, when you come to this, I thought you'd also like to come to my trainings that I have every week. So just for getting my free copy of my book, I'm going to invite you to our weekly trainings so you can keep peace of mind. And then just run that like crazy. Okay. Thank Say. you so much. Say. Yeah. Billy right. just created an entire, I mean, I, I wish you guys would have put your <laughs> company there because you've seen what he just did. Yeah. He just created it out of thin air and made it happen. Yep. Uh, we do have a question. Uh, Shaman, I know you're coming from New York, New York. City. New York, man. Mm -hmm. Spike Lee. <laughs> you know, it says, I'm Shaman, uh, my, <laughs> damn it, Spike, my company is one search away, uh, please give us some tactics for making great YouTube videos, just to let you know, because I know, but Shaman, you should have been more specific, uh, one search away is this company, and what it does is, if you're in anywhere in the world, you can find church services, the oh, local church, cool. I think it's pretty cool, cool. The, definitely, you should definitely say that in your question, yeah, too. Come, on. come on, yeah. he's like, man, um, so actually, that gives me context. So I'll give everybody a, a blanket tactic that everyone can use, especially you, Shaman, is this. Props, music, environment. Everybody write that down. Props, music, environment. Those are, those are three, uh, I guess, pillars that come in every single video that you create. So for example, if your whole thing is about finding a church, even when you're away from us and you, you need to get in touch, you should probably film your video at a church. Right, mm -hmm. so people immediately recognize that. That's your environment category. In addition to that, when people start thinking of church, when you start thinking of music, depending mm -hmm. on, oh, there's some, there's, you got some gospel in your head mm -hmm. or whatever it is, mm -hmm. so now you know what kind of music that's going to be in your video too. And now prop, 
Uh, what's something that you would use in a church or prop? Maybe it's the outfits that you're wearing. Yep. Maybe everybody's got that there. You know what I mean? Yep. Maybe the whole thing is a jingle because you have the choir playing music right there and you're having Love some it. fun with it and you're getting entertaining with it. So that's the thing. If you keep those three elements in mind for all your videos, all of a sudden the creativity starts to come. Because now I'm in a church. I got a bunch of people wearing my gospel gear and all of that, you know, and now you can have some fun with the message. Um, and then also, too, I would almost have like, you can do like a little series of people, quote unquote, testifying about, hey, hey I was having a hard but difficult moment. I was in New York City. I got a call from, from, uh, from my daughter. She was in jail. I need someone to go. Mm. What did I do? I take on my cell phone one search way, and then everybody in the back goes, oh, they loop ya. you know, yeah, 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 and you yeah. can just do a different scenario every single time. Low budget, using the fucking resource that you have now, I'm sure you got in touch with the church, that you can do this at for free, and then it's just the same thing. Create scenarios that when people are feel that they're most alone or most need, when they would want to go to church, right? So it's usually when there's a death in the family. You can have somebody get the phone call, like, oh my god, this just happened. I need someone. I'm out of town. One search yeah, away. You know, One search know. away. There it is. Now. Genius. <laughs> the genetics. Genial. Genetics. Genes. You know, it just yeah. all goes back. That's, that's your true blue name, right, Billy Jean? Billy Jean Shaw III. Wow. That's it. Very awesome. That's Very it. awesome. Yeah. I'm here. Uh, what is this here that you got here? Okay. Oh, this is, uh, this is my workbook, all yeah. right? So... What I started realizing is like, so you guys have seen me today, and it seems like a lot of shit I'm just pulling from my head, right? But part of that's true, but a lot of it's not. It's, it's a formula. It's, it's called the genius process that I created. And literally, it's a book that just walks you step by step how to go from idea to that's turn right. these into advertising campaigns for Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Yeah. So if you're one of those, it's like, damn, Billy, I follow what you guys are talking about today, but what's like the step by step? I need to give me, just tell me. What would they buy that, Billy? It's, it's, it's just, we, we don't even sell it. <laughs> it sounds weird. It's not like, it's so, because usually I like people to go through the training course with it. So what happened is I, I created it as an added resource for my video course. And I said, damn it, people, like, you need to just follow the instructions. So this was to accompany the course. Mm -hmm. Clicks in the customers. So I think mm -hmm. clicksinthecustomers.com, I'm sure there's some kind of link or somewhere. But anyways, that's what we did. It was like a whole wow. entire video training, and then right here it was the book to accompany it. So literally, right now, if you guys said, you know what, I want to create that advertising campaign yeah. in real, you would go through this book, and by the time you were done and going through the process, you'd have it up and running. Mm. It's just an A to Z blueprint, no bullshit, just exercises and... I love it. Hey, guys, um, I took a poll when we started this, so we're going to get the results right now. It's... Uh, what platforms are you currently using to lead generate? We I want to pull out what platform everyone is on and maybe we can shift their mindset and go to sure. YouTube. Let's go to where, what's working for you. But before that, guys, what's your training that you're doing right now? There's one that's, that, that's you're focused on right now. What is this? Um, we have a... We got, we got a lot of shit going yeah, on. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah, tons. <laughs> tons. The, the biggest one that we have going on right now is um, our Genius Accelerator. Okay. This is basically where in our studio here, yeah. Uh, we're blocking off the day for seven to eight hours yeah. and just dedicating the whole day to building advertising campaigns. Okay. So right now, if you kind of follow mentally, like I get what you're saying, but technically you're like, oh shit, what do I do? This is the perfect event for you. Mm -hmm. We'll start off in the morning, I'll share my screen, and we'll walk through every step of the way. Okay, hey, it's time to write our ads. And I'll sit there right with you and wow, do it. I'll give huge. you the formulas. My team will be available. That's you huge. need to hop on the phone and call somebody. You need us to share your screen. You need us to walk wow. you through it A to Z. That's mm -hmm. the point. Because mm -hmm. what I've found is people will get the concept, but they just they just need like a launch. Yep. It's not like you even need to do the whole thing. It's like, let's just get the course started. Let's get you all the tools in place and everything so you can just go. Yeah. That's what the Genius Accelerator is all about. And you know what? There's not a lot of people that does that. You taking the time out and really putting action to it. Mm -hmm. Because people need to feel it. People need to feel that they're yeah. doing something. You exactly. know what I mean? So, guys. Yeah, that's how we, that's yeah. how we learned. And like yeah. in school, we're always used to doing it with the teacher. And like Composition books, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what it was. And yeah. so it's like, okay, let's... Hey, come for killers. Uh, so people are saying 100%. I mean, what is this? Seven and seven people. Wait, did I put that it was multiple? You could actually add both of them. <laughs> Facebook is where people are um, using right now to lead generate. Okay. Um, so their leads are coming through from Facebook. They probably have a lead magnet. They're clicking a button. YouTube is not really that that popular here in this group here. Instagram, 71% for Instagram. Uh, so it should, should be, be now. now. It should be now. I'm telling you guys, it's so cheap. Like literally, think about it. You get you get views for a couple pennies. Like we're getting leads for a couple bucks, sales for a couple dollars on expensive shit. Like yeah. it's, I, I can't stress it enough. So that's where we need to go, Billy. It's been wonderful. I learned a lot. 
She snuck in the question there. She got what right. she needs. I think she's going to take a flight out and get started. Man, I, it, it's been such a blessing. Theo, do you have anything else for, for I'm, man? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I, Look it, at his I, notes. Look at his notes. I like it. I like it. You know I'm what good. I mean? I'm, good. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm yeah, the same yeah. way. I'm this is what we do. Uh, it, again, it's been a blessing. Thank you for, for keeping us in, uh, bringing us in your home, uh, being a part of your family. I'll tell you what, the culture here, just stepping in the door, it's amazing. San Diego's beautiful, but I'm talking everyone came with hugs, pounds, let's do it up. <laughs> well, someone offered me their lunch, I'm like, I'm good, but you know, it's like, you know, so that energy is real here. So what you see is really what you get with mm. you, and I love that. that and let me, so let me give a big shout yeah, out to, to, to the comfort killer. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, that's you, you guys really have to understand, like, Technology has put us in a great place where they can share information yeah. like this. Um, and I always say the fact that you guys are even here, yeah. showing up, paying attention, says everything about you. So continue to rock with these guys. Um, and as you can see, even though they, they're teachers in a lot of regards, but every great teacher is also student at times too, including Ooh. myself. Mm -hmm. I'm always fucking learning. I'm, I'm learning stuff here too. It's mutual. And so never stop learning because the second you stop learning, the second you stop learning. And, and remain uncomfortable. I am. There it is. Stacey A. Cross. And there is no E in my name. Until next time. <laughs> Until next time, baby. <laughs> I love right, that reminder. Yeah, there's yeah, no e in there's my no name. There's no e in it. Yeah, that's it. And you'll be, right. you'll be surprised, though. You're right. <laughs> you'll be surprised, man. That's amazing. Oh, it's just like that. here. People, people will still spell Jean, J-E-A-N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, though yeah, it yeah. says it in front of them, you know? So yeah. it's that's for you. Yeah. If you get a really good one, I'll say it wasn't real. If it's a bad one, I'll give it to you. <laughs> there it is. There it is. What is it? What is it? The Amazon gift card solid. Choose the beer for the kegs. You're choosing the beer for the Comfort killer! Have you ever wondered why people don't get your drive? your hustle, your passion. See, they've been sitting around waiting for things to happen to them while you're out here creating and taking massive action for success in life and business. For us, comfort is not an option. We've sat around long enough. We've played their games and listened to conventional wisdom for way too long. Hey, now it's time that we show the world what it means to be a comfort killer. If this is you, click below to join the rest of the army and get suited up with your free starter pack. I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. <laughs>